What is up everyone, now Billet here with a tech review and this will be the first of many actually and today we'll be taking a look at the Razer Chroma ARGB controller. Now there's not much to say about this but there's a lot to show. It was Razer's answer to those that are already in the Razer Chroma ecosystem. It's an ARGB controller controlled by Razer Synapse 3.0 so if you're looking to judge up your PC with lights, you might want to look into this. Now let's take a look at the packaging. The box itself is a simple brown box you get on some Razer products. If it's not the black packaging with the bright green sides, you get these. Razer Chroma addressable RGB controller on the front with the Razer logo on the top right. Typical Razer branding on the sides and the top. And on the back, you have the contents of the packaging listed as well as the product requirements. Inside the box, you'll find the ARGB controller module itself. You'll see that I've already opened it. Two 3M double-sided tape. The micro USB to USB 2.0 connector for data as well as a Molex cable for power. You'll also find the appropriate documentation as well as one holographic user logo sticker. Now, appearance-wise, I really like how this looks. It's the size of a 2.5 inch SSD drive, which comes in very handy when you're putting inside your case. Uh, the lack of a Razer logo is refreshing, especially of how clean this looks, even though you'll probably never see it once it's actually inside your case. On the top, you'll find the USB and power port, three ARGB headers on one side, hashtag chroma everything on the bottom, and another three ARGB headers on the other side. And underneath, you'll find four threaded screw holes for you to mount into your case. Now, the Razer Chroma ARGB controller is my first non-peripheral Razer product and is entirely for aesthetics. I got a new PC recently uh, with fresh RGB and ARGB components and I was thinking of how I could zhuzh it up a little more. Lots of planning went into this rig. Uh, I thought of getting the NZXT Hue 2 starter kit at first with the Air 2 RGB fans because my H510i case already comes with a smart controller V2 so I could at least commit to the cam ecosystem. Then I found the Techware Orbis F3 RGB fans, which was super cheap, but they look really good. I uh, had no issues that it required uh, proprietary connectors and headers, because at least the control module uh, allows it to be controlled by motherboard softwares, and in my case, uh, Fusion 2.0. But I stumbled upon this, and I realized it'd be perfect for my build, because I'm already neck deep into the Razer Chroma ecosystem. It also opened up options as to what RGB fans I could use, so I settled for the Cooler Master uh, MF120 ARGB fans after being certain that they would use the traditional ARGB headers. And funny enough, these fans aren't certified for use with Fusion 2.0, but with the Razer Chroma ARGB controller, it works just fine. If not, even better now because Chroma is extremely customizable when it comes to lighting. The name really says it all. It's an addressable RGB controller, much like the NZXT Hue 2 as well as the Corsair Commander Pro. But like how NZXT has their CAM software and Corsair has IQ, the Razer Chroma ARGB controller is controlled by Razer Synapse 3.0 and is a great addition to your setup if you're already in the Chroma ecosystem, much like I am. Hardware-wise, both the Hue 2 and the Commander Pro uh, have proprietary connectors and headers, or at least non-universal addressable RGB headers. The Razer Chrome uh, addressable RGB controller, however, simplifies RGB a lot by being able to take just about any addressable RGB device, so long as it uses a 3-pin uh, ARGB header. Though unlike the NTXC Smart Device 2 and Corsair Commander Pro, this does not have fan or temperature controls. On the software side of things, Synapse 3.0 has RGB down with Chroma Studio, especially with the amount of devices in the ecosystem, taking into account other accessories like the nano leaf panels as well as Philip Hue bulbs and strips. Under the accessory tab, Synapse will recognize that a component has been plugged in and you're able to tweak your settings from there. 
Customize will let you adjust the components accordingly. Depending on what device you've plugged in, you're able to switch between LED strips and fans for more accurate adjustment in Chroma Studio. Synapse will also recognize how many LEDs are in a connected component and you're able to tweak that accordingly. It however will not recognize bends in an LED strip, but you can manually key that in. Hop over to the lighting tab, you'll have a couple of things to play with. Brightness gives you the option to play around how bright you want your ARGB components to be. It gives you the option to toggle global brightness on and off. Global brightness turned off will give you the option to adjust the brightness of each component separately. A nice feature if you're particular about those kinds of things. Under that, you'll get an appetizer of what Chroma is capable of with quick effects, often toggled by default. Razer has these presets at the ready in case you're too lazy to play around in Chroma Studio. If you hop over to Advanced Effects, however, you'll have a field day with Chroma Studio. And that's really the main purpose of this controller. To wrap up my thoughts, this was a very welcome addition from Razer. Uh, given that the previous Razer HDK or hardware development kit only allowed up to four proprietary LED strips, really limiting to what the user could do with it, the Chroma ARGB controller has been able to recognize uh, every addressable RGB device I've thrown at it so far. Note that I still have to use the CAM software to control the lighting that comes included in the case, and Fusion 2.0 for the motherboard and RAM, but the Cooler Master fans, the Fantex Neon RGB strips, are all controlled by Chroma Studio, alongside my Razer peripherals, unifying all of these devices into one software. And that's it for my review of the Razer Chroma Addressable RGB Controller. Don't forget to like if you liked this video, dislike if you didn't, uh, comments and descriptions are very much welcome, and look forward to more reviews. And this is me, signing off.